Hello everybody, Eleki Fun here and welcome back to my channel, my vlog. And we have set up this Sima, a Sima Sim 5-3 Lu Luskis. Oh, I'll stick it up on the screen. So there it is, it's all uh, connected up. Now I'm using uh, the capacitor bank and this, well it's 35 volts. Uh, zero 35 volts transformer which gives me 42 volts zero 42 volts uh, on the output here once it's been uh, rectified by the rectifier now the reason why I'm doing this is uh, well just just because this is this would be the transformer that I'd be using on it if I intend to use this amplifier at all so we're just gonna see what it's gonna be like with that uh, now this is all the same uh, as what the kit is, apart from these output transistors. Now I don't think they're really going to make much difference. I've tried these output transistors. These are store-bought. They cost over £8 each. And I tried them on another amplifier against the cheaper ones that I got from our friends uh, you know, in the east there. No real difference, in actual fact. It almost seemed like the amplifier that was set up with the cheaper ones performed better. I don't like saying things like that because it goes against the whole, you know, but just in that instance, now that could be other factors in there that made it like that. But for this, this is like this. And, um, and we're gonna give it a go now. We're gonna be using the audio analyzer software through the Analog Discovery 2. And uh, well, first of all, a quick little peek at the website again, at this. And you can see, you know, the board is, you know, it's, it's not that big. It's not um, such a big layout. I wouldn't mind getting one of these, possibly. Um, we're going to have a quick look at this. Distortion, THD. This isn't THD in noise. We'll measure the noise as well. And then we'll look at the THD into one kilohertz of full power. It says 0.002%. Now that is one hell of a specification. All right. That is one space. That's a good claim. And then we got a uh, THD is 0 0.005 into 10 kilohertz and full power. Again, that's, that's, that's you know, if you can do this, that's absolutely brilliant. It says you can get 100 watt, 100 watt at voltage of 55 volts, plus minus 55 volts. We got, fifth, we got a, a, sorry, 45 volts. We have um, 42 volts plus minus and it says it's got a working voltage here DC dual 20 volts to the 45 volts I thought I saw at one stage 50 volts um, but according to this it says 45 I'm just gonna have a quick look down here because I thought I saw somewhere that said you could use 50 volts bum, bum, bum. No. If we click on that specification it's yeah, right. So, okay, that's good enough. Actually, on the board, if we look on the board here, it says uh, minus 35 volts and plus 35 volts. So, you know, make it up what you will. Personally, I wouldn't go over the 45, and I'm not going to go over 42s because I just, I can't. All right, so let's, uh, I've not even got this powered on yet, so we'll do the gentler tests first. So let's just go over to uh, Windows, my workspace four, there we go, we've got Windows. I've already got the audio analyzer set up. I'm now just gonna uh, put down the power for our amplifier. And I'll go to full screen here, actually. All right, now the first one we're doing is THD in noise. And we're gonna use, well, it says to go full power. Now, oof. I don't want to do that. I'm basically going to go for the standard check, which is going to be 0.2 of a volt. Um, we've got both uh, channels are going to be looked at here. Top 10, 10% um, distortion, the bottom 0 0.001. We could go further down a scale because this 
suggests it can go to 0 0.002. Um, so this will go to 0, 0, 001. So let's just run that anyway. Let's see what we got. Okay, well, it's included, so at 20 kilohertz. Uh, we got 0 0.11297, and that's on the pink. And uh, we got 0 0.11725 on the blue. At 100 hertz, 0 0.09390 on the pink, 0 0.09732 on the blue. If we go straight to our 1K here. We got 0 0.10545 on the pink and 0 0.105752 on the blue. You go to 10K, 0 0.09797 on the pink, 0 0.10962 on the blue. And if we go to 15K, 0 0.104401 on the pink, 0 0.10801 on the blue, and at 20k, 0 0.0827, oh sorry, 8727 on the pink, 0 0.06838 on the blue. And, uh, you know, we get past the audio range and we're Near enough of the same, it drops off a little bit there. 0 0.05181 on the pink and 0 0.05427 on the blue. And that's with the total harmonic distortion plus the noise. So we just filter out the noise and the, uh, it does look better. 0 0.08133 um, on the pink and 0. 08592 on the blue down at uh, 100 hertz. We have 0 0.05700 on the pink and 0 0.06084 on the blue. It's nice, that's hi fi standard. Um, on the pink again, this is at uh, where are we here? I will just go to one kilohertz actually, just keep it. 0 0.05589 on the pink and 0 0.06027 on the blue. We come down, uh, go to 10, go as close as we can get to it. So 0 0.05557% on the pink and 0.0956% on the blue. That's at 10K. Uh, we go to around about 15, 0 0.06767 on the pink, 0 0.07108 on the blue. And if we go to around about 20, there we go, 20, 0 0.06723 on the pink, 0 0.04555 on the blue. All right. So, well, you know, order of magnitude out of what's claimed on there. Um, we, it looks better when you look at the second harmonic if you wanted to. So we can see the 0 0.0425 on the pink and 0 0.0165 on the blue. Uh, go through to 100. I'm not going to go through these all, all the time. Look, it's, it's up here, the numbers are up here. If you can see them, I'm just trying to help out there. But you can see where it, uh, it goes down. Quite nice, we, we, but we don't get, unless you're talking here on the blue, uh, where we can actually get a 0 0.00157 at uh, nearly 5 kilohertz. But that's just hen picking um, the lowest point, basically. Uh, but still, look good on an advert. Would look good on an advert. Uh, the third harmonic is. Yeah, pretty much tracking together uh, 0 0.04 and 0 0.05. So, what's it at uh, the 20 hertz? 0 0.06, 0 0.07. All right, so we're going to look at that. I can't do the uh, power versus frequency because it will the inputs will exceed the input to my 
uh, analog discovery here. And so what I'll do with this one is I'll actually connect it onto my other scope, which has got a much bigger input. And we'll just do it, you know, the um, sine wave, clipping way, and do it like that. But we'll look at the frequency response. Uh, let's just drop this down to three. So we've got three dB up and below. Uh, again, we're going to do it at this output level. We will go up output level and do it again and just see what it's like. We'll give it 100 steps. Uh, both channels, 10 to 50 kilohertz. And we'll just run that like that. Well, interesting that even though they track very, very similar together, uh, you know, as one bit rises, the other bit does as well. Same here, same here, this, this dips, this dips. There's still a, a gap there. Uh, but there we go. We can just look at that and see what it is. So, um, yeah, I mean, you can see here 0 0.75 dB. Uh, difference 0 0.75 here. Uh, around about here would be 1 dB difference between these. Uh, so there's no way near like a 3 dB difference or anything like that. We are talking very small amounts. If we look at uh, 20 hertz, 20 kilohertz, sorry, uh, 0 0.05 uh, dB difference on the um, on the pink, and 0 0.08, uh, sorry, minus 0 0.05 dB difference on the pink, and uh, 0 0.08 dB difference on the blue against the reference voltage. All right, and we got a, we're using 32 dB there as well. Um, yeah, and if we look over here, um, all the way down here at 20 kilohertz, we got minus 0 0.21 and minus 0 0.14. Both these, if we were to look around about 40, let's say that's 39. Um, pink is minus 0 0.13 and the blue is minus 0 0.06. So, you know, still pretty good. I mean, that is not, uh, not particularly bad. Um, let's do it just, let's just for the sake of it, let's double the input. Now, this is going to take it up quite a bit of voltage uh, doing this. It gives it a nice warm up. But let's just see. I mean, we can see that for the way it is. We see the peak there. Let's just see what we get now by, you know, really uh, by turning this off a bit. And I want to see if there's any real difference. Anything that can, you know, hit us straight away has been a big difference. All right, so let's have a look around about 20. 0 0.06, 0 0.06. Uh, one's minus and one's plus. Uh, so the pink is the minus. Uh, we got a slight over the uh, 0, 0.0 dBr line there, and down on the 20, it was 0 0.02. Yeah, so that's you know, they're pretty much around about the same for that extra bit of stress. Uh, I'm going to just put that to there so I remember it. Now we're going to go straight to the scope. Um, what we, what I expect to see is there's going to be some drop off at the lower frequencies. Uh, this is not, um, the L12 did better with this. Absolutely better. It aligned pretty much um, perfectly along there. And I think there was a little tiny bit of um, higher frequency gain with the L12. But we'll take a peek at the scope and see what this shows us. I'm going for the square wave. Uh, we're going to keep that level around about the same as what we've been using. And we're going to go in at 100 hertz, uh, 1000 hertz, 1 kilohertz, and take a single shot. Okay. Well, there we can see um, there's our blue, uh, a slight little tiny bit more, but nothing, you know, nothing uh, particularly bad there. We've got 23 volts peak to peak, 11.96, 11.96, 11.96. .96. So yeah, I suppose that's expected. Let's drop it down to 100 and 
take a peek there. All right, we go there. A little bit of uh, that travel still, and we're dropping off now a little bit with the with the base. Let's go down to let's say fifty for the sake of it. Take a peek at that. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to up the input, right? So I'm going to put that on four like we did on the on the uh, frequency response. I'm just going to take a quick peek at it on four. So the volume is going to be uh, linearly twice as high, the twice amount of input. And sort of showed there a bit more of a peaking there. I can't really tell whether that's gone down, but now we've got 54 volts, you see peak to peak. 27 volts uh, plus and 27 volts minus here. So that really didn't show that much, did it? Let's, uh, let's go down to 30. Oh no, we're just going down to the 20, just because that's the bottom of the range. Mm, okay. Well, we can see we've got some... Uh, some action going on there. I'm going to drop this down because that could be because that might be a bit too high. I'm going to put that. So I'm just going to put it back to two and do a little single shot there. So it makes a difference on your volume level, on the amount of input you got in there. And uh, yeah, I mean it is running off, but we saw that on the frequency um, counter anyway, on the uh, frequency response. And at 40, it looked like it was getting a bit more level. And, you know, that's, that's okay. Right, so the next one, then we're going to go up to 5K. And take a peek at that. Yeah, well, no, that's okay. That's okay. It's hard to say about the speed of this thing. slow just because I don't know whether my equipment is good enough to be able to measure that correctly. Uh, 10,000 Hertz okay still pretty good it's still a square wave let's go to 20,000 Hertz okay and 30 just to take a peek at that okay well I mean it's still it doesn't look like a sinusoidal wave like we've seen some do uh, even up around about 20 we've seen some look like that so that's not too bad if I remember correctly it's not as good as the L12-2 if I remember correctly now the only other one that we can do now is uh, the total armament distortion against uh, versus the power um, but I can't do that on here because, like I say, my maximum input onto this is plus minus 25 volts and it will clip and what we will see is the distortion of the input of my scope, the analog discovery, rather than the distortion of here. So I'm now going to swap over onto my other oscilloscope and just set up for that. All right. All right, then we're going to go to the home screen. And then we're going to want this one. Record screen on. Very good. And now we're going to go to the oscilloscope. Okay, and we're going to get rid of that. We're going to turn that output on. Um, so we've got both these set up, we're on one times 10 volts per division. And uh, I'm recording the screen so you'll actually get to see this. So as I turn up the input, we can see down the bottom, look, uh, what's going on there. And I should really just put that over on order of magnitude. Uh, we're clipping on the bottom, clipping on the top. Let's go in a little bit closer. Mm. So we've got a little bit of clip there, a little bit of clip on the top. And we're going to say that's 26.45 volts. I'm just going to turn that off. 
26.45 volts. That's, that's reasonable. Uh, we'll just have a quick look on the calculator on the screen. Accessory calculator. So, uh, 26.45 times 26.45. And then we're going to divide that by our 8 ohms and we got 87.45 watts or you know um, near as darn it so yeah uh, that's not bad uh, that's, that's not bad um, considering we're not giving you know the full amount of input power it recommended I'm pretty sure somewhere 50 volts plus minus 50 volts uh, but anyway, so yeah, that's what we got. And uh, I hope that was helpful. It's, uh, I don't know what it sounds like just yet, but I will be having a little listen myself. I've got a funny feeling this is going to sound okay. Um, but as for crossing notes against the, um, the uh, L12-2, um, I just from recollection, I do remember the L12-2 frequency response was flatter, and uh, the square wave was uh, was most definitely better down at the lower frequencies. It just corresponds with the frequency response, um, to be honest with you. So there we go. Anyway, that's it. That's it for now for that one. Uh, I may do a side by side comparison uh, just with the um, the outputs like overlay or something, but I don't think we really need to. You can go back and have a look at the L12 video. I'll stick that in the, um, in the description and uh, see for yourselves. See for yourselves. Uh, because I get asked this about the, um, the hey, what about the sound quality? Well, we can tell by the numbers that the sound quality is going to be pretty good. If it was all over the place, it was really bad on the square wave, you can automatically say, you know, there's issues in there, but there doesn't seem to be any sort of issues. So you can sort of say it's going to sound, you know, pretty good, but this is the thing, you know, about the sound. It's going to be how I like listening to it will be determined whether I say, hey, yeah, if it's not quite how I like it, then I'm going to think about it differently. But I'll tell you now that I tend to listen to everything flat. I don't up the treble, I don't up the bass, I don't down anything, I don't play around with anything. I just keep everything flat and boring like that. I just like it just flat. Um, there are reasons why people may want to use graphical equalizers and bits and pieces like that. Um, but I was just taught a long time ago that you have the minimal things in between, the, your input signal and the output, uh, which would basically just be the amplifier, maybe a pre-amplifier. And um, yeah. And that's how I listen to my music, and that's how I judge everything as well when I'm listening. Nothing turned up, nothing turned down. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Take it easy. Bye-bye.